I'm Judy Shaw for NYSE 4 Talk. Joining me today is Kelly Girardi. She is Mission Ops Lead at Palantir Technologies. Kelly, it is so great to see you. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Now, a quick note to our viewers, this interview is for informational purposes only. The NYSE doesn't recommend any investments or investment strategies. All right, so Kelly, you have a career at Palantir and you achieved a personal dream of becoming an astronaut. Tell us about this story and how you did it. Yeah, absolutely. So just to briefly set the stage, human spaceflight was previously the domain of governments, something only a handful of select human beings could ever hope to achieve. I saw the potential for the commercial space industry to revolutionize that, to help open up access to space for researchers and civilians around the world. And I wanted to be a part of that. So I joined the space industry more than a decade ago. I held roles in business development, operations, policy, communications, and eventually research, specifically bioastronautics research. So I have evaluated commercial spacesuits and tested technologies and conducted research during microgravity flights, always believing that eventually one day scientists would have the opportunity to fly to space with their experiments and their payloads. And that all came full circle this past summer when my research institute announced me as a payload specialist contracted to fly on a dedicated research mission with Virgin Galactic, where I will be testing healthcare and fluid technologies in space. I'm so excited. It's like a, the last decade I've had the opportunity to watch the door being blown open to commercial human spaceflight. And it's wild that I get to walk through that myself as an astronaut. But my goal has always been so much bigger than just flying myself. I think the responsibility that I feel is really to hold that door open for the next generation of researchers and civilians who will help make sure that space is a laboratory to benefit humanity. Okay, wow, so exciting. Now tell me, why, why is this important to you? What does it mean to you? Yeah, so I spoke a little bit about the professional journey and how I got there, but there's this other piece that is being born at the right time, specifically this window in history, the first time in 4.5 billion years that life on Earth has the ability to reach space. So we can think of this as a new space age. And my flight is sort of a, you know, entering a new generation of astronauts, not only researchers like myself, but soon civilians of all disciplines. I wanna see poets, athletes, journalists, musicians in space, people of all backgrounds, I think we'll be better off for it. And for the first few hundred humans who traveled to space, their flights focused entirely on function by necessity. But for the next few hundred who travel to space, we have the opportunity to optimize on experience as well. You know, to me, this is a broader cultural movement, this next space age, and our next giant leap will require contributions from artists, engineers, and everyone in between. And one of my favorite quotes sums this up so well, it's, there are no passengers on Spaceship Earth, only crew. And so this is our shared past and our shared future, and I'm excited for more people to have the opportunity to contribute to it. Now, Kelly, you have a daughter. What does this mean for your daughter? What do you hope she sees from your experience? And what do you think she'll be able to do one day? Um, and do you think she'll go to space camp? <laughs> I hope so. She better. <laughs> no. uh, I do have a daughter, Delta V. She just turned four yesterday. And uh, that has been the absolute best part of all of this. It means the world that she gets to watch her mommy become an astronaut. You know, less than 100 women have ever been to space and only a handful of moms. But in Delta's mind, going to space is just another thing moms do. You know, this is her normal and she's gonna go up, grow up with this framework that not even the sky is a limit. It's, it's so powerful. And she's very much a child of the new space age. It's like, look, I don't know, hopefully she will like space when she's older. <laughs> her name is actually even a very nerdy reference to spacecraft flight dynamics, Delta V, Delta Victoria or change in velocity. So at least a passing interest in space would be good. But I think the thing I want her to most inherit from me, no matter what her dreams are, are sort of the permission to relentlessly pursue them. And I think for me, one of the biggest reminders through all of this is how much can change in one generation. Because when my mom was born, Human beings hadn't yet been to space. And when she was growing up, women were ineligible. And just one single generation later, she's watching her daughter prepare for spaceflight. It's a paradigm shift and I'm, I'm just so excited. I hope I'm around to see the future that Delta's generation inherits. But in the meantime, I'm very grateful to be able to contribute to it both through space and through my work at Palantir. All right, so tell me, how does Palantir fit into all this? Given your commitment to space, why Palantir? People would be lucky to get to chase one major passion in life, and I get to chase two. For me, space has always been just the absolute best of humanity, this hope that we can survive our time so that the next generation can live in the future. 
but that future is not guaranteed. And the same way that I felt a calling to help open up access to space for the next generation, I also felt called to help contribute solutions to the most mission critical problems facing my own generation here on earth. And that's why I joined Palantir six years ago. I wanted to help change the world and I wanted to be a part of an organization that doesn't roll its eyes when someone says that out loud. And my work here has taken me all over the world from boardrooms to disaster zones. Our software is deployed to the front lines of some of the world's hardest problems and so are we. So I, I love having the opportunity to have real world impact. And sometimes my space work does dovetail a little bit you know, with Palantir and that's always fun when I get to put on that hat or that helmet, I guess. But space is not the only thing I care about. There are a lot of solutions that I want to contribute to to problems right here on Earth. And at the end of the day, you know, the astronaut thing is just kind of a fun icebreaker at work. But the thing I try to explain to people about Palantir is that there are so many people here from such fascinating backgrounds and previous lives who bring this valuable and unique perspective to the work that we are tackling together as a company. So when I think about the people that I get to rub shoulders with every day, I am just humbled into the ground. And at the, at the end of the day, it's just, that's what motivates me. I wanna work on hard problems with some of the grittiest, most mission-driven, brilliant people on the planet. And I like that I get to wake up every day knowing that my daughter's future is safer and more stable and more secure and more prosperous because my colleagues are involved. And so, that's been the most motivating part. And um, yeah, it's been a hell of a ride and I feel like we're just getting started. <laughs> wow, Kelly, that's all I can say. Wow, it has been amazing to talk with you. Thank you so much for joining me on NYSE Floor Talk. Thank you, Judy.